So let's go ahead and look at the difference in the Romer model. Uh, on the left-hand side here, let's say we see an increase in N bar, which is total population. And on the right-hand side, let's say we're going to see an increase in alpha, uh, which, is, which is our overall um, amount of our um, overall population that's going towards the increase uh, in, pro in production of, of ideas. Uh, of research and development. So we know for the, for the first thing we know with both of these, right, we know a few things about this. We both know that the growth of A is going to increase. Remember that the growth rate of A is chi alpha n bar, meaning that the growth rate of my technology in this Romer model is related to how productive people who are engaged in research and development are times the percentage of the population that's engaged in research and development. So that's going to be what our growth of technology year over year is going to be. And so what we see here is we see uh, N bar and alpha are both in that. So we know that the growth rate of A is going to go up. And we see that in the uh, growth paths that we're going to that we're going to talk about here in a second, right? But what I want to remind people of is if I'm looking at the, uh, the growth of Y, right, the overall growth of Y, Y is going to depend on, in the Romer model, right, it's going to be depend on changes to both technology and changes to capital, right? I know that I know my overall production function, right, in our case is A um, times K raised to some beta, right? So if, if technology is changing and capital is changing, it's going to have an impact on this. So we know about the growth rate of A, but what about the growth rate of capital? Well, in the steady state, right, in the steady state, the growth rate of capital is going to be equal to zero. However, we might need to get to the steady state if we have a shock, which we will in both of these in both of these concepts. So what do I know? Well, on this side, I know that L sub P is going to go up. So an increase in population is the increase in population holding all else constant, right? So this is holding all else constant. L sub P is the number of workers that are producing goods and services. If I bring it, so an example would be um, I'm bringing in a bunch of, of refugees into one area, and if we hold everything else constant, a portion of those are going to go towards producing goods and services, and another portion are going to go towards producing ideas. So the amount of people producing, um, the producing goods and services has increased, and if that's the case, then I know my capital per person who's producing those goods and services is going to decline. So it's going to decline. An example that we give a lot is if we if we had this economy that was uh, represented by a t-shirt factory. And if we have a bunch of people who come and work at the t-shirt factory, I now don't have as many sewing machines per person, right? I don't have as many sewing machines per person. So what does that mean? Well, if I know that my capital to labor ratio is declining, I know my capital ratio, my capital labor ratio is now less than that steady state capital to labor, to labor ratio. And what do we know if we fall below? Well, we're going to start growing towards it, right? That means that KP is going to start to grow. So it's going to start growing back towards that level of K star. So what we're seeing here with my growth of Y, right? It's going to be pushed up by the growth of A and it's going to be pushed up by the growth of K. So you're having two different um, values that are pushing up this overall growth path of Y. So that's all with respect to the change in population. Let's see how this is different when we take a percentage of the current population and we shift it around. Because that's what alpha is. Alpha is like, what if we increase the percentage of people in our economy that are 
engaged in research and development. What that's going to do is that's going to take some of the workers at our t-shirt factory that are producing goods and services out, and they're going to put them into some sort of uh, university or some sort of think tank, and they're going to be producing ideas. So the big difference here then is that my L sub P is actually going to decline. We have less workers in our overall um, in our overall factories, right? Producing goods and services. So if L sub P goes down, then K sub P, my capital per worker, is going to increase, right? If we if if uh, ten percent of our factory workers at our t-shirt factory decide they're going to go back to school, we now have more sewing machines per person who's working. If that's the case, then we're going to therefore have K sub P is going to be uh, greater than K star sub P. And what do we know again? If it's greater than it, we're going to have my growth rate, or sorry, if it's greater than it, I know my K sub P is going to start falling back towards the overall steady state. Meaning my growth rate of Y now is going to be pushed up by the growth rate of A, but it's going to be pushed down by the growth rate of capital. So it's going to take a longer time to get to its new overall steady state. Okay. What does that mean if I scroll this up? What does that mean with our growth paths? So let's go ahead and quickly finish up with that. I'm going to go ahead and give us some nice straight axes here. So we can keep everything nice and uh, nice and fresh, and our growth path. We're going to be looking at how is y changing on a log scale, so that way, you know, if it's if it's if it's growing over time, it's going to be a um, a constant rate. And let's say that these changes are happening at t equals zero on both sides here. So both of these are happening at t equal to zero. And if we say pre this, we're just at some rate. So we just add some rate here up until this point. Now, what's going to happen when we see the change? Well, when we see the change initially, right, this on this side is an increase in n bar. We have more population, so output is going to fall initially. But we know that eventually it's going to get to a higher slope. But what do we know? It's getting pushed up by both of them. So that means it's going to go up quicker, and we're going to get to that new steady state. So this is going to be my change in Y, where we have a, a steeper slope. Over here, this is my change, my alpha going up. So again, I'm taking people away from production. And so if I'm taking people away from production, then the overall production has to be going down. But now, technology is pushing it up, but capital is pushing it down. So it's going to take a longer time to get to that higher growth path. And so that's why we see it kind of take a longer time to get to that growth path. What I like to show here in this case is you can argue both for and against these policies because you can look at short run versus long run. Increasing my population, in the short run it hurts us, in the long run we're better off. Sending more people to university in the short run hurts us, but in the long run is better off. And that's a super interesting policy thing that the Romer model comes at.